This episode is sponsored by Ground News. Contrary to what the internet would have you believe, not everything in Australia wants to kill you. Wombats just want to be left alone to dig their holes and poop their cubic poop. Turtle frogs just want to be left alone to dig their holes and eat termites. And platypuses, well, you get the idea. Though, to be fair, a whole lot of very dangerous animals do live in Australia, from spiders to crocodiles. That list also includes a sizable share of the world's deadliest snakes. But as frightening as their venom may be, plenty of those snakes have a much softer side than their reputation lets on. In fact, a few of them are downright cuddly. The Bizarre Beast Pin Club is open for subscriptions for the whole month. Sign up by September 20th, and the first pin you'll get will be a red-bellied black snake. Australia is home to 25 species of dangerously venomous snakes, which may seem like a lot until you realize that those 25 are out of almost 200 species of Australian snakes. And sure, more than 12% may feel like too many deadly snakes for comfort, but it's still a far cry from the imagined every single thing in Australia wants to kill you trope. Even the term deadly as a common label for many of the snakes in question is painting them with too broad of a brush. Their bite may pack a punch, but that's not all there is to them. For example, they reproduce produce in basically all the different ways vertebrates can. Take the common tree snake, Dendrolaphus punctulatus. This non-venomous cutie grows to almost two meters long and can be found in tropical forests all around eastern and northern Australia. Tree snakes are oviparous, meaning that they lay eggs. We can think of these guys as our basic baseline snake, because things only get weirder from here. The eastern brown snake, Pseudonia textilis, is about one and a half meters long on average and can be found all over the eastern part of Australia and beyond. The snake is venomous, and that fact combined with how often they interact with people means that eastern browns cause more human deaths than any other Australian snake. But again, let's not harp on the lurid killing you aspect. What about their reproduction? The part where they make more alive things. Like tree snakes, eastern brown snakes are oviparous, but they have a bonus ability. Rather than immediately laying fertilized eggs after mating, females can store sperm for multiple weeks. So if egg-laying conditions aren't quite to their liking when they mate, they can wait up to two months for the ideal opportunity. The curl snake, Suda Suda, a venomous species that we totally didn't include just for its great name, averages about 40 centimeters long and shows up all over mainland Australia. But Unlike our first two species, the curl snake is viviparous, meaning that instead of laying eggs, it gives birth to live offspring. As much as we might think that mammals have cornered the market on live birth, it's actually a reproductive strategy that has evolved many, many times independently in animals of a scalier persuasion. And that brings us to the red-bellied black snake, Sudecus porphyriacus. At one and a half to two and a half meters in length and showing up in wet habitats near humans all over Australia's east coast, you might think that this venomous snake would be quite a threat. But red-bellied black snakes are far more likely to flee or freeze than they are to attack. What really sets this species apart, even from other snakes in its own genus, is that it's oviviparous. As the term might suggest, it's basically halfway between being oviparous and viviparous. Females produce eggs that they don't actually lay, instead allowing them to hatch internally. Then they give birth to the resulting live young. And lastly, to round out our snake sample pack are the coastal taipan Oxyurinus scutellatus, and the inland taipan, O. microlepidotus. Both species are so venomous, to the point where the name taipan is more or less synonymous with the whole lethal Australia premise that we're unpacking here. I mean, another name for the inland taipan is literally just the fierce snake, and it has the most toxic snake venom in the world. Both species are oviparous, and they have that handy sperm storage ability like the brown snakes. But coastal taipans have an even more impressive reproductive trick up their figurative and unnecessary sleeves. They can reproduce asexually. Scientists confirmed genetically that the female's offspring in their study, all of which were male, developed from unfertilized eggs in a process known as parthenogenesis. It's not clear how common this is in nature, but we can say that along with some snakes, some sharks and aphids also do this. And the behavior that goes along with these weird reproductive methods is even better. If you caught our episode about small carpenter bees, you'll know that animal sociality can take a lot of different forms. And that goes for snakes 
as well. Despite the solitary hunter image of predatory snakes, several of these species tend to, for example, team up when it's egg-laying time. Female tree snakes lay their eggs in the same nest together, with possibly over a dozen individuals sharing the same tree hollow. The species is also known for huddling together over winter, and grouping up can become an annual tradition. Cooler still, their aggregations can sometimes be a mix of different snake species hanging out together, which is a level of cooperation that might come as a surprise. Eastern brown snakes also nest communally, often laying many eggs in the same spot. Scientists aren't totally sure why some reptile species make communal nests, but it might be to save energy, to share limited nesting resources, or to provide better egg protection via safety and numbers. Whatever the case, it seems to be a much more common practice than we tend to give snakes and other reptiles credit for. But our Australian Snake Cuddle Fest doesn't end with simply laying eggs in the same place. Female red-bellied black snakes group up after they're pregnant and then stick together continuously until they give birth. They'll usually form groups of up to six, and then they become inseparable, basking in the sun together by day and hiding out together by night until they've had their little snake babies. This behavior may improve defense from predators during a time when the snakes are in a more vulnerable state. But ultimately, scientists aren't really sure about the exact purpose of these snake sisterhoods. And outside the context of reproduction, Australian snakes cozying up for shelter just overall seems to be a pretty common occurrence. Aside from mating and hibernating, these groups may form to help with moisture retention, energy conservation, and defense from predators. The latter few possibilities might also help explain how mixed species aggregations might happen. The point is, our Australian killer snakes are social butterflies, and they highlight a major misconception not just about Australia, but about all snakes. We tend to associate being social with the kinds of animals we can most easily observe acting social, which often means those that are most like us. But species that are harder to find, like snakes, prove that they can hang if we only give them a chance to show it. A recent study on Butler's garter snakes found that the species is not only social, but that individuals break into subgroups based on age and sex, like they're high schoolers forming cliques. On top of that, the individuals that were more social tended to be healthier than the loners, which further highlights how far off we are in imagining all snakes as solitary. Then again, garter snakes are kind of well known for their impressive aggregations, so maybe the idea of them being friendly isn't so groundbreaking. So the researchers turn to ball pythons, which don't aggregate or communally den, or generally show any obvious signs of being social. And yet, Young ball pythons seem to go out of their way to be around one another, prioritizing group formation when they could. Garter snakes in North America and pythons in Africa may feel pretty removed from our handful of Australian species, but the broader point still applies. Snakes are likely much more social than we think, but our preconceived notions have been in the way of us finding out. The cool behaviors of brown snakes, black snakes, tree snakes, and tie pants are part of a bigger picture of serpents as misunderstood softies that deserve another look. And while Australia's snuggliest snakes may not take off as quickly as the world's deadliest moniker, we can certainly try. Often, the easiest way for a beast to seem bizarre is for it to just be different from humans in enough ways. The further from primates, and even mammals in general, that you get in the animal kingdom, Kingdom, the more unfamiliar it's all gonna feel. It's no wonder that snakes, cold-blooded and scaly and limbless, have maintained such a hold on our cultural imaginations for so long. So, as a place where admittedly high proportions of the world's deadliest snakes live, Australia has understandably earned some notoriety. But snakes are so much more than their toxic bites. And if we take the time to get to know them and how they behave, we might find that we have a lot more in common than we realized. Still, Probably not a bad idea to give them plenty of space, though. Sign up for the Pin Club at BizarreBeeShow.com and help keep this channel going. If you want a snake to be your first pin, sign up by September 20th. And now for some bonus facts. Just because we wanted to talk about more than biting and venom in this episode doesn't mean that those two things aren't still super cool. And for the brown snake genus Pseudonia, these features are not one bite fits all. Snake venom composition varies from species to species, which 
makes sense. Lots of traits vary from species to species. But the chemical makeup of the venom can also be quite different, not only within the same type of snake, but even within the same individual throughout its life. Venom differences have been observed before in various Pseudonia species, with each toxic cocktail corresponding to specialization for a specific prey type. Most brown snake species adjust their diets as they grow up, though, eating mainly lizards when they're young and more mammals as adults. So, sure enough, their venom changes throughout their life, too, reflecting the updated chemical needs of taking down animals in totally different taxa. The species P. affinis takes it a step further, though, modifying the actual shape of their fangs as they get older. They have shorter, blunter fangs when they're young and are eating mostly lizards with tough scales, and narrower, pointier fangs when their diet includes more soft mammals as adults. It could just be that tooth shape is an incidental developmental difference throughout these snakes' lives, but the exact age when they make the fang change happens to also be the age when their diet switches, making this correlation seem a little more deliberate. So while these Australian snakes certainly deserve credit for more than just their effectiveness as predators, it's nonetheless impossible to deny that they're the best at what they do. We talked about ball pythons a little bit in the episode, so I thought I should introduce Laszlo. This is my ball python. His name is Laszlo. He is, he'll be five in October. And uh, he is, uh, so he's pretty full grown. I mean, they grow throughout their life a little bit, but he's not gonna get much bigger than this. I think he's about three and a half feet long, but uh, he's a great little guy and he's our little friend. He's got, uh, you can't see it right here, but he has a little bump in his spine. There's just, he's always had it since, she, since he was a tiny baby, um, but it doesn't bother him. He does just fine. He's perfectly good little dude. He lives in our house uh, and he's a great little friend. Yeah. Isn't that right? You might have seen him uh, when we did the Viper socks. All of the uh, all of the product photos for that featured Laszlo being very cool. Uh, a little model, which is great. So in the episode, we're talking about Australian snakes, uh, but we don't even get to talk about the fact that Australia has tons of pythons. Uh, not ball pythons, but uh, they have uh, carpet pythons, and even the smallest species of python is from Australia. Do you have a favorite Australian snake that we didn't get to talk about in the episode? Let us know in the comments. If this was the first time you've heard the everything in Australia wants to kill you trope, you might be stuck in an algorithmic bubble, missing out on perspectives from different parts of the media landscape. But that's where this episode sponsor, Ground News, can help. Ground News gathers related articles from sources around the world and provides context about the source's political leaning, reliability, and ownership so you can compare coverage and get a more complete picture of the whole story. For example, they pull together more than 60 sources reporting on the discovery of a new giant stick insect from Australia. Many of these articles came from left and center-leaning sources, leaving a potential blind spot for anyone who relies mostly on right-leaning sources for their news. Plus, Ground News lets you compare and contrast how different publications frame the same story. In this case, one headline called the new bug horrifyingly huge and leaned into the whole deadly Australia trope, while another called it spectacular, and many others stuck to the purely descriptive heaviest. Ground News also helps you assess the factuality of the publications these headlines lines come from by averaging the scores of two trusted rating systems that look at source credibility, speed of corrections, and preservation of context. They've even been recognized by the Nobel Peace Center for their impact on media literacy. Give it a try at ground.news BB. If you sign up with this link, you'll get 40% off the Vantage plan, which gives you unlimited access to every Ground News feature. Make sure to use our link in the description or QR code to sign up so you can see the full picture and can think freely for yourself.